From the east and the west, you've heard others, but now you've tuned into the best. This is a Prime Wave Media production. What's up? What's up? It is that time for the premier sports betting show, the primetime angles with the one and only Pop DiBiase, the primetime capper. And it is what it is, baby. You see where I'm at right now. I'm chilling in Caesar's Palace right now in the resume doing a chizzo for you guys. So pretty much it is what it is. It was a good little flight up over here. Everything was pretty quick. But I just had to go ahead and do NFL bet exchange first with Jeffy and uh, make sure that that was taken care of for you guys today. So pretty much be on the lookout for that Thursday. Very good show once again with NFL bet exchange. As you guys know, we broke even this week again on show bet. So if you guys tell us you didn't lose any money this week, so you guys already know what time it is, man. So, man, I'm telling you, it's going to be a good day today. We got a lot of bets in the um, – Mac uh, today, and also I'm going to give you guys the updated odds on who's winning on uh, AFC Championship, NFC Championship as well, too. And to start the show off, we know we're going to have to talk about some NBA because, you know, I'm not going to do the show without talking and putting my two cents in about the trades that were made last night and the situation that's now going on in Brooklyn as well, too. So pretty much it is what it is, man. But, man, you guys already know, man, what you call it? Um, it is, dude. I'm telling you, but it is. But we we got this though. We got this though. We got this. But um, man. All right. So let's jump into it real quick. Cause I'm telling you, it's all blocked out right now too. As soon as I turn my head, everything was good. So let me. Yep. All right. That's perfect. So y'all can see that I'm up in the house and everything like that. Man, let's switch it around for y'all real quick. So y'all don't see the curtain, but it is what it is, man. But let's get into the show. And um, up first, let's go ahead and talk about them Brooklyn Nets, boy. The Brooklyn Nets is sitting over here right now debating and contemplating what should they do. Now, if I was them, what they should do is they know what they need to do. They need to just go ahead and get rid of Harden. They need to fleece, um, you know, they need to uh, fleece the uh, Nets for everything they got pretty much for Harden right now because they do pay Harden a good dollar amount and everything like that. So pretty much it's going to be heavy on the cap. But if you want to win an NBA championship, you got to go all in because you got to understand Brooklyn is not a town that really needs to be over here trying to build you know, great franchises and every, everything like that through the draft. They already failed in that part years ago when they went and got um, – Kevin Garnett and the crew and things like that. That messed them up for five, six years. But didn't they make three or four playoff appearances in that time as well, too? So it goes to show you that draft picks are overrated. And they didn't win any championships, but they still were able to make the playoffs and win playoff series as well, too. So the Nets, to me, they have to go all in here, man. They got to do it for Brooklyn. Because the thing is, this is how they can take the city over. If they go ahead and invest in themselves and say that this is going to be our team right here, I'm telling you right now, if you put Harden and KD together again, that's going to be damage for the NBA. And these guys, it's a 72-game season. Guaranteed they win 50 or more games a season as well, too, if they put that tandem back together. Now, if you were had to, if you had to get rid of Kyrie, would you do it? If I'm the GM of the uh, Brooklyn Nets, I'm going to – Give it to you guys in my Steve Austin voice. That's a big hell yeah. I don't care what you guys say. But at the end of the day, Kyrie, it could be a detriment to this team because he's too emotional. He's too he's too about himself. Now, if you put Harden and KD on this team, they will have Brooklyn jumping every single night. I'm guarantee that, guys, that Brooklyn will be will be the hottest place to be at for a ball game. You'll see every celebrity in New York City, anybody who's doing things in New York, they'll be at the Brooklyn game. The the garden might be half empty. I know I know that's cap, but still, that's good dreaming for um, Barclays, a place that's 
really suffered when it came to attendance. If you want to fill the seats up, go all in and make this deal happen. You got Jared Allen. You got Spencer DeWitty. You got all these really good feasible players that will look great with Houston next season and make Houston not good, not great, but they'll be credible, just like the Nets were. So why not? Why not? And Pop and pr the primetime capper loves Viva La Mexico too. Uh, man, I love I love all the cut everybody, all my countrymen that are in the U.S. and all around the world. Man, I really do appreciate you guys, man. So pretty much, thank you guys, man. Chile, man, y'all the best too. Uh, what in South Central America? I love y'all, man. Australia, love y'all, man. Chile, ML, but uh, yeah. It is what it is, though, man. But pretty much, you know, I got to spread the love, man. But thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. But, um, yep, there it is, man. Brooklyn, you better go all in, dog. We want you to go all in. The NBA, the fans, we want you to go all in. We want to have this type of uh, situation, man. We want to have this. Pilawino, what were you saying? Yep. But, yeah, man, pretty much. It is what it is, though, fellas. Brooklyn, 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 make it happen. Because you know why? This team is now the favorite in the East, and you got to make it happen. They didn't mind giving up draft picks because they're not playing for the draft. This team is playing for championships. They got a two-time MVP in Giannis. They ain't trying to waste that boy's time. This is what good teams do when they really want to win championships. So them going in on Drew Holiday, they found the perfect complement for Giannis. Now Giannis doesn't have to put all this pressure on himself. Now he doesn't have to be so ball dominant. Now you got Drew Holiday who can play both ends of the floor, tighten up that already pretty good defense, and the and all systems go now with the Bucks. I think what the Bucks need to do though, they need to add some more um they need to add some vets. They need to add some really good vets this year as well, too. No young guys, guys that have been around before, guys that played in the championship before, things of that nature. And this will help this team move forward and be a much better team this season, man. But I really, truly do think the Bucks are going to be that squad this year. And, yes, we do have NFL news coming up right after this as well, too. And um, Louis Adrian just called it. He said that the uh, Brooklyn will be champs in 2021. Tomorrow I have the, uh, the first preview of uh, the top 10 teams on where they sit at for the uh, where they're sitting at and everything like that. So pretty much you guys will get a dose of that one as well too. So, uh, man, I'm telling you, the Bucks have to make this deal happen though, man. I, I really do think that this is the last – this is the last uh, – last, last stand for them this is going to be about a two-year thing for them but honestly though this is timing is now but be ready for chris middleton to possibly be moved as well too that's the whole thing man think about that think about that as well too um with uh chris middleton being moved because now you can have some time and things like that and um it will go from there what are y'all talking about Del Cocho Pigs? Who the hell is Del Cocho Pigs, bro? This is the primetime angles, baby. You with DiBiase right now. What's going on? Y'all already know what it is. But, um, man, I'm telling you, that's where it is at with the Bucks and everything like that. And, uh, man, let's go ahead and move forward. And one last trade. Let me tell you that the Robert Covington trade is going to make the Blazers that much of a better team this season, um, in my opinion. This is a trade that they had to make. The Blazers lived in the draft for 10 years straight. They wound up getting Dame Lillard and McCullum. Those were the best players that they had, you know, that they pretty much got out of that deal, other than LaMarcus Aldridge, who left. You know what I mean? So other than that, they've been pretty good at picking up most of the players that uh, go through, um, you know, pretty much uh, find themselves on a wa waiver wire, all that good stuff, and go from there. Um, never heard of him, man, but good for him. Um, so, you know, Rockets, all in all, though, they are cleaning house right now. Rumor is, is that they don't like the owner's thoughts and what he like, what he wants to do and, you know, what his personal things are about. But whatever, they all just want to get out of Houston, man. You know, all that shooting that's going on out there right now, too. It's Robin season in uh, Houston right now, bro. I, I wouldn't want to be playing there either. So I'm telling you guys right now, this is a much better trade than it looks like on paper. That's for all the people who are just so in love with the draft. Like, do you, you guys know how 
overrated the draft really is, dog, in a sense. Like, seriously, you really only get about 20 players that are going to be really feasible. And then in some drafts, you might get only five or 10 that are going to actually have 10 year careers, dog. So come on, don't play yourself and think that this is the end all be all when you're trading away years worth of draft picks. If you're over here trying to build up a team to win a championship. Yes, the Rockets know what they want to do. They got brand new everything, brand new head coach, brand new general manager. So they're going to be in position now to where they're going to be chasing draft picks for the next few years. And that's fine because they invested a lot of money in Hardens and Westbrooks and Covingtons and gave up a whole bunch to make these things happen. And they haven't got to the and they're not getting to the finals. It is what it is at the end of the day. You can't keep burning up money. All right. So. We move on, and let's talk about the AFC real quick. The AFC Championship game odds are like this. Of course, you have the Chiefs as the leader in the clubhouse right now. Then you have the Ravens 11-2, uh, to two, and then you have the Steelers 2-1, to one, probably presenting the best value out the top three teams in the NFL right now, uh, out, in, out the NFC right now. So there it is, 2-1 to one on the Steelers. That's a good play right there. And these are all via uh, Caesars Palace, uh, but these are William Hill odds, okay? So that's 11 to 2, 7 to 4. Those are like 9 to 5, 3 to 2s and things like that. They don't pay much, okay? And then you have the Steelers with 2 to 1. That should be that's a good little ticket right there for you as well too. Uh Bills 10 to 1, that's a nice ticket. Colts 10 to 1, that's that's a dream, but we'll see how it goes. Dolphins, that's another dream, but 35 to 1 never looks so good. Then you got the Raiders 22 to 1. That's a that's a hope and a wish right there as well, too. Then you got the Browns. I just did this for my I know I got Cleveland Browns fans that uh watch this as well, too. They 60 to 1 right now, fellas. I know that they really don't have any shot shot, but they hey. It is what it is, man. They 60 to 1 and the Titans are 11 to 1. That's the AFC Championship odds for you guys right there. I feel like the best three in this group has to be if you want the value, you would say you would probably want to lean towards where the Bills and the Steelers are at even though 2 to 1's not that big a value is better than what the Ravens and the Chiefs are presenting right now. And then the Chiefs have a, a, a lock it down bet. That's just something that you would feel like you could do a for sure thing. And then just to be crazy and just to be silly, this is John Gruden. He might run the table this year. Raiders 22 to 1. So those three bets to me are pretty fun right there. But I think the two that will cash out for you will have the best shot chance cashing out for you Chiefs or Steelers. All right, so we move on. The NFC is funny. Um, we got the 11 and 2 with the Saints. We got 9 to 4 with the Seahawks, the top two in uh, that conference. Then you got the Packers at 5 to 1. You got the uh, Rams at 12 to 1. And then you got the uh, Cards at 10 to 1. You got the Bucks at 11-5, but we know why. You know, they whooped up on the Packers, but I don't know if that would be the same game in the playoffs as well, too. Then you got the uh, Bears 50-1 to as well, and then you also have the Eagles. I just threw them up here. We know the Eagles ain't going to no damn Super Bowl, but they're just up here because they're leading their division, and they're 22-1 to right now. So... There it is. There it is. That's the NFC side of things for you. These are all the uh, top, top, all the teams that are looking at a playoff spot right now. This is where, this is where it's at. So, um, pretty much, uh, that's the NFC side for you. Now, let's get down to where you guys came in here for, man. And pretty much, it's going to be the Mac Bats. Let's get it. Akron at Kent State. Akron, at Kent, Akron and Kent State are monster rivals. They are arch rivals. This game does not matter what the spread says. It doesn't matter what the over under says. It's all all bets are off. Really, they are just. This is not the type of game where you can walk in here and say, "Oh, Kent State finished match." What did Akron do last week? They covered. They cover pretty easily as well, too. They lost the game 27-14. So that means that the team is getting better by the week. Had a horrible performance in week one. Had a moral victory in week two. Now they go against their arch rival and they're on the road. This could be a silly upset right here as well, too. But I... It, it, don't bet on that part. You guys don't get yourself confused or anything. Just play, play it simple here. Under 59 for the total game. I think what happens here, weather is going to play a part into this game a little bit. And Akron played really good defense last week. They gave 27 points. That's it. And I think that they can 
channel that defense into this week as well, too, because they're going against a team they know very well. So I'm taking the under 59 here uh, for the Akron-Kent State game. Then I like Akron in the first half just to be hanging around. You know what I mean? The, that's why I got the under here because I feel like Akron's going to hang around a little bit, chew up clock, get some stops that nobody sees coming, and go from there. So pretty much what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and take the um, plus 14 and a half on Akron here, and let's see how it shakes out. Then we got Kent State under 42 team total tonight. I think they fall just short of the 42-point uh, threshold because that's a lot of points, and the weather's not funny right now out in northeast Ohio. So I'm going with the under 42 team total. I think this should work out for us, and we go from there. And then we have Akron. I have them going over 7.5 in the first half team total because, come on, look, look how small that number is. Don't you think we could squeeze 10 points out of this team? They're not that bad. You know, that's the whole thing. So pretty much they're on two, but they're not bad as they were last year. And once again, it's a rivalry game. So I expect them to come out scoring early and uh, pretty much keep this game right where we need to keep the game at and – um it is what it is. You know what? I would record in a book, bro, but it's just not a smart idea because uh, as I start talking and throwing out lines and things of that nature, then pretty much here comes security talk about what are you doing. So you guys got to understand Vegas a little bit more. They really don't want you out there on your cell phones like that either. You can't walk up to a teller with your phone in your hand talking about these are my plates. So I'm just, you know, you just just making sure that I don't get bothered, dog. That's all it is, man. So um, I'll do something in the book for you guys a little bit later on tonight though but i i throw out a play or something like that for you but i just have to explain that to you guys real quick and don't worry about that yet man we do i'm in vegas for a reason man we working on big business stuff out here in vegas right now this ain't for uh gambling and well there ain't no strip the strip clubs is closed right now so that option's already out so pretty much it is what it is and you know the the nightclubs you gotta wait till the weekend so it is what it is man but um Pretty much that's our Akron-Kent State game, and we go from there. Now we have the game that's going to be a good one, and I know y'all going to look at me crazy. Why am I going with the road team that is a 31-point favorite tonight? Because they're that just that damn good. And uh, pretty much I think Buffalo goes ahead. They take care of their business tonight. They're going to go ahead, and they're going to really, really mop the floor with uh, Bowling Green tonight. Because if you, you saw what they did last week. We got the over, and they wound up scoring a lot of those points much later in that game as well, too. You know what I mean? So, um, And they came in bunches as well. So I can see Buffalo scoring on all their first drives of the game to start off to get, get us to where we need to be. So we need over 24 in the first half, so we need them to start fast, and we need, to, need them to be in the end zone often in this spot. Also, the 31, I think we can hit it. We'll have it by the fourth quarter if they play, if they go ahead and play accordingly. If they don't sit up in here and uh, play um, patty cake with the uh, Bowling Green. All right, so here we are, minus 31 on Buffalo. I know it's crazy right now, but there's a reason for that because Bowling Green, this is the only way you can get action on Bowling Green tonight, okay? And I think Buffalo is going to make sure that, you know, those betters go home kind of mad tonight. So there it is. But, you know, thirty already giving out 31 points to start a game off. That's not what I do. But the thing is, though, one of these teams is going to cover this monster spread. And um, where is Coach O'Picks? Hello, Coach O'Picks. How you doing, buddy? I hope you're not stealing stuff. But you know what? You do what you do, buddy. All right, Buffalo over 24, team total first half, and then we got the seven and a half first quarter. I expect them up two touchdowns by the end of the first quarter, and we go from there. We won a 21-point lead in the first quarter. We truly, truly do, okay? So it is what it is, baby, and uh, pretty much, man, that's going to be a wrap on the show today. I want to thank you guys so much for, uh, you know, uh, tuning in, you know, hanging with your boy for a little bit. 
you know, now it's time for me to go ahead and enjoy the city a little bit and get to the, down here to these meetings and all that good stuff. But you guys make sure to share, retweet the show, whatever you have to do. It's going to be on the YouTube soon with all the nice extras and everything that I have for that portion of the show as well, too. So, you guys, I'll be back tomorrow at the same time, 9 a.m. We're going to do our early show tomorrow. Don't worry about that. We'll have that ready tomorrow. So, you guys, be on the lookout 9 a.m. tomorrow, we're going to have some good mat bets for you. We're going to have some NBA draft stuff as well, too. And I'm going to uh, also be talking about some NBA futures with you guys as well, too. So make sure to tune in, all right? This is the premier sports betting show with the one and only Pop DiBiase, the primetime capper. And, uh, yeah, they they good for you, bro. They, they did cash out last night. Good for them. All right, so pretty much it is what it is, baby. This is the premier sports betting show. And, um... Hey, bet with your head, not with your heart, and um, I am gone. Thank you for tuning in to the Primetime Angles, the premier sports betting show, hosted by the one and only Pop DBIC, the Primetime Captain. This is a Prime Wave Media production, and go ahead and press that subscribe button. From the East and the West, you've heard others, but now you've tuned into the best. This is a Prime Wave Media production.